In this video, we're going to have a look at how to go about determining the nature of the roots of a quadratic uh, function. And we do that by looking at what's called the discriminant. And we can then predict what type of roots that the quadratic function will have. Now, you're all familiar with the quadratic formula. And you would use that for a quadratic equation in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And you know that different quadratic functions um, look differently. So if we throw an x-axis and a y-axis just like this, you know that you're going to have some quadratic functions which have perhaps two roots. So there we see one which has two roots. You know that you can have quadratic functions which maybe just have one root. You only touch the axis at one point. And you can have other quadratic functions which perhaps have no roots at all. They don't cross the x-axis. So how is it that we identify what type of uh, function we've got, whether it's going to have two uh, real roots or if it's going to have equal roots or if it's going to have no real roots? Well, it's all down to the discriminant. Now, we mentioned before that we get one of our roots when we use plus and quite often we get a second root when we use minus. This thing here is what's called the discriminant. And the type of function you're talking about and how it's going to appear on a graph, it's going to all be down to this discriminant here. Now, let's have a look at what we mean by that. Now, you know that your discriminant is, well, the square root of the discriminant is going to be added or subtracted. So this discriminant is either going to be greater than 0, it's going to be equal to 0, or it's going to be less than 0. These are our three scenarios. Now let's look at the implications of each scenario. Now if our discriminant is greater than zero, that means you've got something to either add or take away. That means that this thing here is going to have some substance in it. And by adding it or by taking it away, you're going to end up with two different uh, values for x, if you like. So when our discriminant is greater than zero, you always end up with two real roots, okay? They'll be, they will be distinct, so you say two real, oops, two real and distinct. That just means separate, distinct roots, okay? So two real and distinct roots when the discriminant is greater than zero. What about when the discriminant is zero? Well, when the discriminant is zero, you all know the square root of 0 is 0. So when the discriminant is 0, what's in this box is going to be 0. And it doesn't matter if you add 0 or take away 0, what you end up with is going to be the same. So when your discriminant is 0, then it doesn't matter whether you add 0 or take away 0, what you end up with is going to be exactly the same. So what you end up with when the discriminant is 0 is equal roots. Okay? So you have two real but equal roots, okay? They are not distinct, they are not different, they are equal, okay? So, two real equal roots. Now, finally, scenario three is when the discriminant is less than zero. Now, when the discriminant is less than zero, that means it's going to be negative. Now, you have to find the square root of the discriminant. Now, can you find the square root of a negative? No, you can't. So what happens is that this doesn't work, and it doesn't work because there are no roots. So when your discriminant is less than zero, the conclusion is that you end up with no real roots. Okay? So you have to memorize this table if you are going to be able to determine the nature of the roots. So let's have a look at a few examples and see how we get on. Okay, right. So you ask to determine the nature of the roots of the following functions. So let's do these together and let's see how we get on. Now the first thing you have to do is identify a, b and c. So a is 3, b is 2 and c is 1. Okay, so I can just write that down. a is 3, b is 2 and c is 1. So discriminant remember is b squared minus 4ac and that gives us 2 squared minus 4 lots of 3 times 1 and that gives us 4 minus 
4 times 3 times 1 is 12, 4 minus 12, negative 8. Now, we have to then make our conclusion. And what we'll write down is we'll say that p squared minus 4ac is less than 0. So therefore, what do we have? We have no real roots. Okay, that's what you need to do. Find the discriminant and then communicate your conclusion after that. Okay, let's have a look at B. Okay, now in B, again, first thing you do, identify A, identify B. Remember it's not 12, but negative 12, and C is 9. And then find the discriminant, B squared minus 4AC. Now, uh, B squared would be negative 12 times negative 12, so that's just positive 1, 4, 4. Then you're taking away 4 lots of A times C. Now that's 4 lots of 4, and then you're multiplying by 9 as well. So we end up actually with 1, 4, 4 minus 4 times 36, which is 1, 4, 4, and that gives you a discriminant of 0. <clears throat> and then what we can do is state our conclusion. And we'll say b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. Therefore, what do we have? We have two real but equal roots. Okay. And finally, we do c. Again, identify a, b, and c. a is 1, b is 7, c is is negative 2. b squared minus 4ac would be 7 squared minus 4 lots of 1 times negative 2. Now that gives us 49 minus, now 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, so you're taking away negative 8, which is 49 plus 8, which is 57. And that's your discriminant. And you can see after that, that b squared minus 4 ac is greater than 0, it's positive. So therefore, we have two real and distinct roots. Okay, so that's as done, these examples. Now, have a go at these yourselves <clears throat> and check back to see if you agree with what... Uh, we've got. Okay. Let's have a look at A just now then. Okay. So B squared minus 4 AC, that's going to be 6 squared minus 4 lots of 1 times 11. So in other words, 36 minus 44, which is negative uh, 8. Okay. So your discriminant is less than zero. Now, uh, we'll then say that our discriminant b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. So therefore, what do we have? We have no real roots. Okay? <clears throat> no real roots because the discriminant is zero. Let's have a look at this one. Now, this time, we'll say b squared minus 4ac, that's going to be negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. You take away 4ac, so 4 times 2, times 2 again. So that ends up with 16 minus 16. So 4 times 2 times 2 is 16, which is 0. And you can then say, well, my discriminant is 0. And therefore, it follows on that we have 2 real but equal roots. Okay, we have two uh, real equal roots. Okay, so in other words, just one real root. Now, let's look at the last one. <clears throat> we have a value for a of 5, a value of b, which is 7, and a value of c, which is 2. And we can work out our discriminant. We'll say b squared minus 4 ac would be 49 minus 4 times 5 
times t. So in other words, 49, and you're going to take away uh, 40, okay, and that leaves you with 9, and you can then say, well, your discriminant is positive, so that means that you're going to have two real but distinct roots. Okay, two real distinct roots. And that's how you use a discriminant to determine the nature of uh, the roots of a quadratic formula. Now, you can sometimes come across questions which are, I suppose, a wee bit more, um, I suppose, a wee bit more like a kind of a problem solving style of question, which will involve knowledge of the discriminant. And here we have a question like that here. Okay. You're told uh, to find the range of values of p such that 3x squared plus 6x plus p equals 0 has two real distinct roots. Now, let's see what we've got here. Now, we don't know what this value is. We don't know what p is. But we do know that for this function, because you have two real distinct roots, then the discriminant must be what? It must be greater than 0. So you start off by forming an, an inequality based on what you're told at the end of the question. And you can then say, well, b is 6, so that's going to be 6 squared, and you're taking away 4ac. Now, a is 3. You can see that from there. And uh, your c value is just p. Okay? And that's greater than 0. So you end up with 36 minus 12p is greater than 0. And we need to just solve that inequality. So if we um, add 12p to both sides, we end up with 36 is greater than 12p. Now if I swap the sides, I flip the symbol. And then if I divide everything by 12, I end up with a single positive letter on the left-hand side, and I get p has to be less than 3. So as long as p is less than 3, that function will have two real and distinct roots. Okay? So that's how you go about using the discriminant to find uh, the nature of the roots, and I hope that that was helpful.